guys! I am here today to share with you my thoughts on my first read for Japanese June, and it was In the Miso Soup by Ryu Murakami. Not to be confused with the world-famous author Haruki Murakami. Ryu Murakami is quite famous in Japan. While he has written almost 40 novels in Japanese, I think less than 10 of them have actually been translated into English, so he's a much less accessible author than someone like Haruki Murakami. You may be familiar with some of his works because he wrote the novel Audition, which was later adapted into a very popular horror film, also called Audition. But I believe in terms of novels that In the Miso Soup is his most famous. Ryu Murakami is quite well known because his books are quite disturbing and they are also usually pretty scathing social commentary, and In the Miso Soup definitely falls among both of those. Without giving too much away the basic premise behind this novel, there's a Japanese man in his early 20s, his name is Kenji, and the way that he makes money is that he gives foreigners tours of the basically the red light districts in Japan and helps hook them up with prostitutes or take them to peep shows or strip clubs and that type of thing and he the foreigners will pay him for this service of taking them to all the best sex places basically so he has a new client named Frank from America and this kind of chronicles them that going through Kabukicho which is in the Shinjuku district of of Tokyo. Shinjuku itself is a really busy station and also a very famous place for shopping. A lot of the high class stores are there. They're not interested in Shinjuku, they're interested in Kabukicho, which is within Shinjuku and it's known for being seedy and having lots of Yakuza activity. Yakuza are Japanese gangsters and things like that. But it's not all about sex. Things end up taking a darker turn because while Frank is in Japan uh, there have been some murders in the area and Frank himself is a very creepy guy. He's very obviously lying about a lot of things and seems to be quite unstable but Kenji is in it for the money and doesn't really feel like he can say no to Frank so they journey together to Kabukicho. That's that's where the story starts off and as you can probably imagine this book is very graphic in a lot of ways. Not just sexual but also in terms of violence and cursing and that type of thing. If you're sensitive to any of those things, this book is definitely not for you. It is salacious and a little bit ridiculous at times, but I found it very compelling nonetheless. I really wanted to know what was going on with Frank because he seemed so weird, and also it was an interesting look into the sex industry in Japan, which I find quite interesting um, just because it's quite different culturally to the sex industry in, say, the United States. And also it is a really interesting social commentary because they're going into this place, uh, they're going into the red light district, it's a very lonely place. People go to these types of places for companionship of some kind, but the people actually working in the sex industry ha don't want sexual companionship, they are actually lacking social companionship and friendship and actual love, so it's a very empty and lonely place to be both as a client and as a worker, and I think that Murakami is definitely pointing to these things and criticizing the way that society is structured and the inherent loneliness that people feel just by living in a city so large in a culture that is so reserved. And in that way it actually did remind me a lot of Haruki Murakami because if you've read any Haruki Murakami you know that he is very interested in loneliness. They're obviously addressing this issue in vastly different ways, but I think that it's important to acknowledge that loneliness is being covered by two extremely different authors because it means that it's actually a big deal and something that a lot of people think about, not just people like Haruki Murakami. Throughout the novel, questions of identity are also definitely raised, not only in really literal terms like who is Frank and why does he lie about who he is, but it also I think leads Kenji to think about his identity and the way that people express their identity and how people are on the, at least a surface level, are very fake and very phony. Some place like Kabukicho or even Shinjuku as a whole is an inherently phony space because everyone's trying to put on airs about who they are. Particularly people who are soliciting sex or are working in the sex industry at large, 
there is an inherent phoniness in the relationship that they have, in who they are portraying themselves to be, and again this feeds back into the idea of loneliness. A lot of these things that I'm discussing right now are definitely subtextual, they are not directly related to the plot, so I'm not spoiling anything, but these are really important themes that the book is addressing, and I think if you just read it for the plot it would itself feel like a very empty and shallow novel. And when you see the subtext and you kind of understand where Murakami is writing from and the really deep, intense emotions that his characters are feeling, this book has so much more meaning than I would have ever attributed to it without having ever read it before. So while dark and disturbing, yes, definitely, not for everybody, absolutely not, and quite adult in in theme and in content, I would recommend In the Miso Soup if any of the things that I said sounded appealing to you and you are interested in a book like this, which is like, deceptively shallow but has a lot actually going on. So those were my thoughts on In the Miso Soup. I would love to hear somebody else's thoughts on any of the themes that I addressed or the plot itself because there actually is a rather big twist in the middle that was quite thrilling, so if you have wanted to discuss any of the things involving this book, I would love to hear someone else's opinion, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!